Well, we are now being joined by Mohammed Abdullahi for some of these burning issues ahead of the 2023 general elections. Hello, Mohammed. Good evening to you. Good evening, Nigerians. Um, it's always uh, my pleasure to be here. Okay. Well, let us start with the back and forth between the River State Governor Nisam Wike and the national chairman of his party, the PDP. The PDP crisis has become quite phenomenal at this point. What's your take on this? Um, uh, thank you very much for that question. Uh, for me, it's quite laughable that, uh, and uh, comic that uh, the leading opposition party in Nigeria is embroiled and engaged in such uh, uh, things that doesn't hold water, rather than fight for how to like compete favorably with the incumbent uh, APC and uh, the emerging powers of uh, the Labour Party. The PDP has since enmeshed itself in uh, in a comic fight, uh, and um, you you really cannot blame anyone but uh, the PDP itself, because uh, for a very long time now, since they took upon the mantle of opposition in Nigeria, they've really uh, disappointed Nigerians in terms of uh, uh, critique of the current government of the current uh, policies of this government and so on. So what they've been engaging on is like infighting. Having said that, uh, I see both parties, I mean, the, the, the Governor Wike's uh, side of the uh, of PDP and as well as the national chairman side, uh, I mean, the chairman IU side, uh, you know, have uh, on so many occasions um, breached uh, some of the rules of uh, uh, partisan, if I will use that word. Because I remember two weeks ago or less, even Governor Wiki uh, endorses the governorship uh, candidacy of another party in Lagos, whereas there is a PDP candidate here in Lagos. So, you know, it's just a back and forth which shows that the PDP, they are never ready, they are never serious, um, you know, and this uh, comic attitude of the party costs the party a whole lot of um, uh, chances in the coming general elections. They should have no one but themselves to blame. So right. it's, it's, really, it's really unfortunate. Okay, well, staying with the issue of elections, well, the issue of funding has been brought to fore by Serap, you know, asking the presidential candidates to um, publish their funding. And, and first of all, what does the Electoral Act say about campaign funds? Now, that's, the, that's, that's a very, very uh, interesting question. Um... We know before time or before now, it's, it's one big challenge that we have to face in Nigeria, how we source for campaign funding. Uh, in fact, I remember INEC mentioning that even before campaign begins, campaign kickoff, uh, we've had uh, a whole lot of the parties, I don't want to mention a particular party now, but you know, a whole lot of the parties have already exceeded what, what is expected for, for, for parties to spend you know, during campaigns. So it's, it's, it's quite challenging, uh, and it's one area, one gray area that needed to be fixed. Uh, I can't categorically tell you what the electoral says, but I know it's one challenge that INEC is really battling and facing because of our kind of system in Nigeria, you know, uh, of our, our kind of system of lack of accountability. So I think it's, it's something that we need to, to be serious about. It's something that uh, if there is no law backing what INEC has, we need to have a law to like punish people severely, you know, if they are not accountable, uh, you know, in terms of what they get and how they get it, where they get it, you know, the sponsorship of funds for their campaigns. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's quite disheartening, but uh, I think I need to do more in order to checkmate what parties are doing, whether internally and externally, how to uh, generate funds to, to, to service their campaigns. Yeah. Okay, well, Let's, uh, because time will not allow us to explore that further, let's, let's go into the campaigns or, uh, you know, itself. The campaigns have officially begun. What's your assessment of the campaigns by the candidates, the major candidates so far? Would you say they are issue-based? No. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's the regular uh, back and forth of uh, comic and satires, if I may use that uh, phrase. 
you know, I see like, uh, for instance, uh, two days ago, uh, the supporters of uh, a particular party uploading photos of the LP presidential candidate, uh, perhaps allegedly sleeping, uh, you know, at a campaign ground or at a particular palace. Same thing happened some two uh, months ago as well, where a particular supporters of particular supporters of another party uploading the photos of uh, the APC flag bearers sleeping elsewhere. You know, it's been it's, it's been non-issue based. We have a whole lot of challenges in Nigeria, the issues of basically insecurity. I think that should be one thing that should be on the front burner in Nigeria. How these flag bearers intend to tackle insecurity. In fact, I was so disappointed yesterday. I listened to the uh, presidential candidate of the LP in Nasara State mentioning, you know, why Nigeria must always co uh, qualify to the FIFA, to the FIFA World Cup. And it's, I know, yeah, we love football, but it's not our best right. You know, there are so many issues affecting Nigerians directly in Nigeria. Like I mentioned, insecurity, poverty, challenges of uh, dilapidated roads, and so on and so forth, and even electricity. These are so many things, yeah. that basic infrastructures that we want to hear what these uh, candidates have to offer. But isn't it a sh sad, though, that in as much as you say that they are not talking about this, they are talking about these things, but isn't it sad that time after time, these are the same things that politicians come to promise Nigeria. We've not moved from this level. Water, light, roads. These are things that politicians, time after time, election after elections, you know, come to promise us. What does that say about Nigeria's growth as a nation? Yes, you are right. It's, they are not talking about it. And even if they are talking about it, we need them to talk more about it because we don't have them yet. I'm sure in your house, probably you provide your own water, you pay a megad. Mm -hmm. To use that word, blah, 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 and so on. In fact, you even generate your own electricity by having a generator. So we don't have these basic necessities. So in as much as we keep talk, we have to keep talking about these things because we it is not yet available. So we it's like anyone that will come to provide Nigerians 24-hour electricity today will become like a messiah. These are things that the developed world have you know gone past, even South Africa have gone past, except now. You know, even Ghana and so on. They've gone past probably five, six years ago, 10 years ago, and so on. Some, some developed world probably 50 years ago. But we don't have them. So if we have anybody coming to tell us, giving us the blueprint and making sure, telling us how he or she will provide these basic amenities, that person becomes a messiah. So we can't stop talking about this. And it tells the growth that, it tells us that we are not growing. In fact, if it's, it's, like, it's like we are stagnated, you know? So uh, it's... It, it is really important that this candidate tell us and tell us how they are going to achieve these basic necessities that are Nigerians have been deprived. Yeah, Mohammed, when you listen to them speak um, as much as they have spoken so far, as you have rightly also observed, we need to hear more from them. But if you go to their websites, you see same things in terms of manifestos. How do we? How do Nigerians mm. sift out? and determine who to trust among all these people who are promising them? How, how would you advise Nigerians to choose from these lots and their promises, who to trust? I think it's simple, antecedents. I would say, in my own opinion, antecedent. What uh, uh, he or she has done in the past. It's not necessarily that the person must, must, must have held uh, an electoral office an elective office in the past. No, if it's a private sector person, what has he or she contributed in, the, in terms of where he or she has worked in the past? What is the human capacity development of that person? When he or she held social, social office, what did he or she do? You know, so because, you know, like you rightly mentioned, we've had a whole lot of promises back and forth. But I think the best way to trust people now is to say, okay, if you are promising me this, you were once governor, in so 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 year, what did you do? Can we go back to verify and check what you did? So that will spur us to like give us our trust, uh, give give you our trust, and then elect you in the fourth uh, coming general election. So I think that is an antecedent for me is uh, the bedrock of what uh, Nigerians should look at in the fourth uh, coming general election. And like I mentioned, antecedent doesn't general doesn't necessarily means political office. No, 
We have so many private citizens. What have they done that are buying for office at this moment? Well, thank you so much, Mohammed Abdullahi, for joining us to take a look at the forthcoming elections and the issues surrounding it. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.